Hello everyone, welcome to another uh, review or analysis with Hadramat Kushans. Uh, today again the topic is COVID-19 and today we have got uh, a latest study about the Evermectin. In the last video I was discussing that in the next video we will talk about Evermectin and its therapeutic effects on the infected people with COVID-19. So first let me ponder upon uh, on one thing that some people are saying that heat it prevents the growth or it degenerates the proteins of viruses yes it is true but it's approximately 56 degrees celsius which leads to the degeneration of the viral proteins but i don't think that we can do heat sanitization in medical institutions because it disturbs the normal flora which is also beneficial for us and it also kills the infected microbes, uh, uh, the bacteria or viruses which are infectious for us. So that's why we do the autoclave or we can say sterilization of the uh, surgical instruments which leads to the stunted growth or you can say that total death of the microbes. We've got a study from Bangladesh that uh, there is one doctor, Dr. Tariq Alam. He has been using these drugs evermectin with doxycycline and he has used this drug in 60 patients with COVID-19 and they all are recovered. They are marvelous effects of these drugs in the COVID patients and it decreases the viral load up to 5000 times as compared to the infected cells not treated with evermectin. We can use uh, remdesivir we are using, we are using hydroxychloroquine but this is something which is like having a marvelous result in the uh, cure or you can say treatment for the COVID-19 patients and it is also approved from FDA that the drug inhibits the replication of SARS-CoV-2 virus in vitro within 48 hours. Uh, the FDA has approved this drug by testing it in the vitro in a petri dish on the viral particles or you can say infected cells H lamp cells which are known as so within 48 hours it decreases the uh, RNA viral load in a single dose so these are marvelous effects shown by Evermectin let's go that how it is administered and what is the dosage form and what are the more consequences of these drugs for the overview of the Evermectin it is actually odorless colorless powder and it is uh, some off-white powder and it contains 80% of dihydroevermectin beta 1a and 20% of uh, dihydroevermectin uh, beta 1b so this is the properties of the drugs these are the properties of the drugs and what is the mechanism of action it actually plays with the action potential of the cells especially uh, if you have studied action potential in the Guyton and Hall book of physiology, you can, you can understand the concept that how this drug works in the human beings. As far as uh, the drug is concerned, it is mostly used for the anti-helminthic drugs. Like it is considered as anti-helminthic drug which uh, is used for the invertebrates. Invertebrates are those who don't have a vertebral column, especially worms and it acts on the worms by opening the glutamate activated chloride channels. So uh, I think that it is a complicated thing for the common people to understand but medical students if you are watching this you can go into the deep uh, grave of this medicine that how it work and how it acts in human beings and there are different there is a barrier between invertebrates and vertebrates of course and uh, it acts on glutamate channels of chloride like glutamate uh, activated channels of chloride channels and uh, by that it <coughs> allows the influx of chloride in the cells and making it hyperpolarized. Now if the cell is hyperpolarized it cannot come back to the threshold potential it cannot come back to a normal value so that it works properly so it is hyperpolarized and the cell get the paralysis and this is how this drug works in the neurons of invertebrates 
and in the muscle cells of invertebrates also. So in human beings, uh, it also acts on the neurons and you can say the cells, but uh, for the cells to be in a good form, it has to make them hyperpolarize or it has to work on the enzymes or certain transporters of the cells which allow the viral protein or viral infusion into the nucleus of the cell. So for humans, it, is, it works on GABA-gated chloride channels making the cells more hyperpolarized so it causes the paralysis of the cells but for that, it has to be something because it is lipid soluble also, it is less water soluble, so it crosses the blood brain barrier, but not often in all the human beings. It is it, with the drug therapeutic effects, there are also the contraindications that it is not indicated or it is not allowed to be administered in those patients who have any problem of the CNS which disturbs or which distorts the blood brain barrier, especially in the patients of meningitis especially in the babies because in the children because their blood brain barrier has not established enough to defend the diffusion of this drug into the brain and also in the pregnant women same for the babies and the neonates and the fetus it is fetotoxic drug if you are using it in meningitis you are using with any problem immunodeficiency especially and also the pregnancy because there is a basic concept that if there is a virus, it infuses with the cell membrane of us human beings. It cannot go on its own. It has to be, there has to be some transporters which take the viral proteins or viruses from cell membrane towards the nucleus. So there are alpha 1 importers and beta 1 importers which take the viral proteins or viral makeups to our nucleus and they command to our uh, nucleus that you have to increase the infection and decrease the antiviral response. So the antiviral response is decreased and the infection is increased. So what this drug has to do, the Evermectin, it disrupts the alpha 1 and beta 1 transporters by disrupting the viral load on those transporters which are going to the nucleus to make more destruction. And what happens from that? it disrupts and there is destabilization of COVID proteins which are going towards our nucleus to make more destruction. So it causes decarbolization or they, the cargos which are going towards our nucleus, they are decarbolized. So this is how it works within a cell. So according to Dr. Tarek Alam, in the patients he was treating with uh, Evermectin and uh, Doxycycline, uh, the patients they showed response and uh, the viral load was decreased 5000 folds within 48 hours and what FDA said, FDA said that we uh, experimented this drug in the vitro, vitro they take the cells in the petri dish, the infected, infected cells and supernatant fluid and they tried Evermectin on them. They said that within 24 hours there was decreased viral load in the cells by 99.8% and the fluid within the petri dish it was also having a marvelous results of reducing the viral fold approximately 93% so it decreases the viral load in vitro within 24 hours so I think these are the marvelous results of the Evermectin even the, uh, there is a study that Clinica University Dad de Navarra and Barcelona I, I hope I have pronounced it rightly. They are also going to administer a single dose of Evermectin in their COVID-19 infected patients. So as far as it is concerned with the Evermectin, Evermectin is also used in the dogs and for the hookworms or for the heartworm syndrome in the dogs. It is used in animals also because they are also worms and it is used for scabies also it has been used being used for the head lice also so it is a very therapeutic drug and for the administration there is oral administration the peak of this drug reached after the administer administration within four to five hours the half-life it is uh, something we have to focus the half-life of this drug is 57 hours 
so we have to take it very much carefully that we don't get toxicity of this drug that if we are taking it daily daily and daily it causes toxicity severe toxicity but it is shown to be anti covid 19 drug so uh, according to the bioavailability of this drug it is 93% protein bound it specially binds to the protein known as albumin in our body you know about albumin in the egg the white the uh, the egg white it is also actually albumin and uh, what happens if there is decreased albumin in your body maybe you can answer in the comment or i am here to tell you that it causes ascites because albumin is also water capturing protein if it decreases in your body it causes the accumulation of fluid into your abdominal cavity which is known as ascites it is also shown in cirrhosis of liver uh, by the way we are going uh, away from our topic we have to concentrate that what are the more effects and uh, it is uh, extensively metabolized in the liver so if you are administrating ivermectin you cannot find in feces you cannot find the drug particles in your urine because it is all destroyed by the liver because there is an enzyme CYP3A4 in the liver which causes the destruction of ivermectin after its therapeutic effects have been achieved. And we cannot also use doxycycline because it has the C class, it is contraindicated in pregnancy. We can use ivermectin but with some doses. We haven't found any doses from Dr. Tariq Alam from Bangladesh. And I salute you, doctor, that you have been doing marvelous and tremendous efforts in tr treating the COVID-19 patients and you have made them a quick recovery within some days or we can say 48 hours, two days. But for the therapeutic uses, I have found some dosage. We have found some dosages from the uh, Goodman Wellman Pharmacology 13th edition. And, uh, but there are the standard doses and uh, there are some diseases I hope uh, I would not be able to share all the diseases with you. Maybe I can share some uh, onchocerciasis and there is strongyloidiasis, there is lymphatic flariasis, there are doses, different dosages and for the strongyloidiasis there is 150 to 200 microgram per kilogram in a single dose. This is what they call a standard dose of the ivermectin. And if you are using it for the lymphatic flariasis, you have to take it 200 microgram per kg plus 600 or you can say most precise way of calculating that in a standard dose is 400 mg albendazole with that once every year. So for the standard dosage and the therapeutic uses of the drugs, we have been taking it only once in a year or maximum twice in a year. So it again depends on a single dose. If a single dose of ivermectin can give us this much therapeutic effects, then I think it would be good for us to have a clinical trial also in our own underdeveloping countries too. So there are some uh, rare adverse effects from the goodman willman pharmacology. There is fever. Fever is increase in temperature, you know. Facial edema, there is swelling on the face because what it causes it causes, it binds the albumin and it is not in every person, it's, it is variable from person to person. So that's why there are rare side effects which are not mostly seen in all the patients. There is tachycardia, increased heartbeat. You know what is tachycardia? Myalgia, muscle pain, arthralgia, joint pain, peripheral edema, swelling in the peripheries like foot and hands, extremities, especially headache. And the rare is permanent disability because if you are using it if you are using this drug in a patient having non-intact or distorted blood brain barrier or you are using uh, this drug in pregnant women which is you know this drug is phytotoxic also so what happens it goes to the brain it opens the GABA associated chloride channels making the influx of a lot of chloride within the cells making them hyperpolarized and leading them to the paralysis which we can say is a permanent damage and there are some precautions for this drug use also 
which I have been telling you from the starting of video till now that we haven't uh, we don't have to use it in meningitis meningitis is swelling of the meninges the protective layers of our brain we cannot use this in African trypanosomiasis it is a disease also we also say it African sleeping sickness uh, some FSC students would have been known this disease we studied in that and impaired blood brain barrier or distorted blood brain barrier and uh, it is also not approved for the children less than 15 kg of body weight so if the children have less than 15 kilogram body weight it is also contraindicated in them and uh, it is also contraindicated in pregnant and lactating women so one of my friends was asking that what is the problem of ivermectin administration in lactating women it is actually that when a woman is lactating she is actually milking and she she is giving uh, her immunity her ingredients to the child which has been feeding on her so ivermectin appears in the milk in the mother's milk and ivermectin goes into the child neonate and we have already said that in children in babies the blood brain barrier is not intact and it is distorted it is not developed enough so it goes and it can cause uh, edema of brain it can cause permanent disability so this was all about ivermectin uh, from some researches from the I, I again salute to the doctor dr tarik alam from bangladesh and uh, from the Goodman Wilman Pharmacology so far it has been a very good book for the dosages and the therapeutic uses maybe you can also study that and uh, this was all about the ivermectin and uh, in, I hope in tomorrow's video we'll tell you something more about a very astonishing drug which has been used in the comorbid patients also and it has treated and make them recovered 100% from the ventilators and these are actually the antibodies and these are known as Lironly map. So in tomorrow's video, in tomorrow's uh, medication, we will talk about Lironly map that how it is been working in the patients. And I salute all the doctors who are making researches on their own places. And I salute all the doctors who have been doing efforts in this field. And uh, we are just here to make you more informative about this and uh, i hope you like the video so kindly like if you don't like no worries because i know when you like a video it comes in your library and it disrupts when you're listening to the music so hope you don't like it by the button but you like it by the heart but if you like it by the heart then kindly share it to other med persons also to your fellow beings also